information and sentenced to 35 years in prison on Wednesday. It made headlines. However, it was this moment on the Today Show the next day that was arguably even bigger news. Let's talk about Mr. Manning personally, and he has provided a statement that he wants us to read, and this is part of it. As I transition into this next phase of my life, I want everyone to know the real me. I am Chelsea Manning. I am a female. Given the way that I feel and have felt since childhood, I want to begin hormone therapy as soon as possible. I also request that starting today, you refer to me by my new name and use the feminine pronoun. So what will this mean for her time in prison? Joining me live now, Mara Kiesling, founder of the National Center for Transgender Equality, and Mason Davis, executive director of the Transgender Law Center. Mason, let me start with you. Is, is Chelsea Manning who you want representing the transgender community? Well, certainly transgender issues have been in the spotlight since Ms. Manning came out this week. Uh, she is... Uh, an unusual figure in uh, America these days, but some of the challenges that she will face are not dissimilar from those faced by other transgender people. It's scary to come out as a transgender person, somebody whose birth sex is different than who we know we are on the inside. Um, and she is now starting a, a big step in her life as she goes through the process of becoming who she really is. Mar Manning's, Manning's attorney, David Coombs, he talked about his client's motivation for the announcement on the Today Show as well. Let's take a listen to that. Is the ultimate goal here for her, him, to be in a female population, a female prison? No, I think the ultimate goal is to be comfortable in her skin and to be the person that she's never had an opportunity to be. What does the timing of, of this announcement mean for Manning's safety heading into prison, Mara? Well, transgender people in any kind of prison, whether civilian or military, um, face uh, some really horrible things that uh, often happen with a greater frequency uh, than to other people. Sexual assault, denial of medical treatments. You know, I think this is the point at which, from Manning's point of view and Manning's attorney's point of view, they have to be speaking up. But this is a problem, as Mason mentioned, that's been happening for, you know, decades, if not centuries, that transgender people um, are, are forced to face severe violations of their human rights in, in prisons. And I would hope right now that, that the military is, is really trying to figure out how to solve all of the sexual assault problems facing the military, whether in prison yeah. or in normal uh, combat times. You, you just alluded to some of the abuse. Your organization analyzed a, a Justice Department report for May and found that more than one in three transgender former inmates was sexually abused. Specifically, what kind of protections should be put in place to, to try and stop that? Well, the, the Department of Justice has issued rules for uh, implementing the Prison Rape Elimination Act. Uh, Congress decided in the mid-2000s that um, sexual assault in prison, we've had enough of it as a society. Nobody should be sentenced to sexual assault. So bipartisan, a bipartisan Congress passed the Prison Rape Elimination Act. The Department of Justice has now implemented it for civilian jails and prisons. The Department of Homeland Security is about to um, finalize their rules for immigration detention. And we would really like to see the military accelerate their processes to put the Prison Rape Elimination Act in place for uh, military prisons. Mason, what kind of elements of living as a woman will Manning be allowed in prison? Well, that's one of the reasons we need good regulations uh, established by the military to make sure that she is able to be treated with respect and is able to be safe while she's incarcerated. Uh, we know that the courts have a legal obligation to provide uh, adequate medical care to all prisoners, including transgender prisoners, given the widespread medical agreement that transition-related care for transgender people is medically necessary, we are certainly eager to see her get the care that she needs while she's incarcerated. You mentioned medical care. Gender identity disorder is an accepted psychiatric condition treated with hormone replacement therapy and in some cases uh, sex changes as well. But in Manning's case, the Army has said it does not and will not provide the hormone replacement therapy that Manning has requested. Are there grounds, potential grounds for litigation here, Mason? Yeah, we don't think this is the last word on this subject. Courts have consistently ruled that uh, 
prisoners have to have access to care. This includes transgender prisoners. Uh, we believe that the military will need to look at this and come into step and standard uh, with current medical science when it comes to transgender people. But, sh but should that burden fall on, 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 a, on the taxpayers? Well, we have the Eighth Amendment that says that transgender people, all people in prison, have to have access to good medical care. Um, this is a settled court, a settled issue in the courts, um, and we need to make sure that we take responsibility for the people we're incarcerating. Mark Heasley, Mason Davis, a big thanks to both of you. Appreciate that Thank perspective. Thank you very much, Craig. Thank you. The New Jersey's governor's race just took a turn. Actually, it took